Oh, what's up, Philadelphia sports fans? I am Anthony Pinto. Welcome to the War Room. We are War Room Philly. <clears throat> Live and direct on a Thursday night. Not our usual night. And in fact, speaking of things that are uh, unusual, if you will, um, Keith and I will be live right here on Twitch, uh, pre-game um, on Sunday for the Eagles. So tonight's game, tonight's game, tonight's show uh, will be focused on, look, it's been a couple weeks since I've been here. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about this Eagles season. We'll talk about this Phillies season. <clears throat> And uh, we'll talk about the possibility or lack thereof of making the playoffs for both of these teams. Um, among that, there's still a lot going on with the Sixers head coach search. The proverbial stove is heating up. <clears throat> when we talk about uh, Mike D'Antoni, I'm kind of curious as to... As the, the crowd's feeling on that. Um, so it's a little bit of everything. <clears throat> it's a little bit of everything tonight. So, we have the Bengals this week. Uh, the Eagles are 0-2. In a really disappointing start. Look, you should be 1-1. Minimum. You you cannot lose a game that you go up seventeen nothing. <clears throat> People like to use the excuse of injuries for week one, but all of those injuries were in place when you went up seventeen nothing. The injuries are no excuse. Your defense has been piss poor. <clears throat> since the second half of that Redskins game. And your offense has been mediocre, and so is your quarterback. Quite frankly, Carson Wentz has been average. And we're paying him much more than average. I don't care who's injured on the offensive line. I don't care who's injured at wide receiver. He has got to make better decisions. He's got to make better throws. I'm a huge Carson Wentz fan. Everybody knows that. But I calls it like I sees it. Now, because I'm saying these negative things about Carson Wentz, we're not going to get rolling on the Hurts train. That's not where this goes. <clears throat> In fact, I will still... You know, Howie Roseman should be on... His his seat should be absolutely in flames right now. Because of that, and especially because of that Jalen Hurts pick. Because you sign Carson Wentz to that deal, and then you do nothing to protect him. When you should be doing everything to protect him. Look at what the Cowboys are doing to surround Dak. They won't even give him the contract. You gave Carson Wentz the contract, and yet you refuse to surround him with anything. You went into this offseason with an offense that you changed nothing about other than a bunch of rookies. Howie Roseman's seat should be in flames. On fire doesn't even begin to, to start. And we knew that in the draft. <clears throat> so let's get Howie Roseman out of the way Carson, again Carson Wentz has got to make better throws he's got to make better decisions Joe Hunter, I see you in chat I'm going to use a term that I always remember you saying about Donovan but Wentz has the happy feet right now Wentz has the happy feet and that's that's if you look look at his game, his arm strength is still there, everything's still there. But it, he he's not setting his feet. And again, Doug Peterson do a better job. Why is it 
Every time we do the quarterback boot plays, Carson is running to the left against his body. Why in the hell does Doug Peterson make Carson Wentz run against his body with these designed quarterback boots? He should be running to his right. Why? You're already, like, his footwork is needs work, and then on top of it, Peterson is putting him in a bad position. The Eagles are 0-2 in a collaborative effort, if I can steal one from the Sixers. <clears throat> and just like the Sixers, this collaborative effort is bad. Haven't even got to Jim Schwartz yet. <clears throat> you know what's funny? We uh, used to bitch at Andy Reid drafting offensive line, but now, now we wish Doug would. Yeah, Andy Reid every year the first of uh, the first you know round or two would be an offense and defensive lineman. And what really pissed us off about Andy Reid's is that they were Jerome McD like they were is it uh, was it not Jerome? Uh, you had the McDougals, and you had like. You had a ton of... You had uh, the firemen on the offensive line. Danny Watkins. Flash forward, you got the, the rugby player, Jordan Maialata. Huge difference. Seventh round pick, first round pick. But I... The point still needs to be made. Mamula. Yeah. M well, we got another Mamula. His name's Derek Barnett. Mr. Close But No Cigar. Mr. Injury Table. What up, Keith? Shout out to my co-host. <clears throat> I mean, it's 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 been it's been really and it's it's the biggest thing with this team is is their drafting has been has been piss poor. So it's it's a total collaborative effort. And in my opinion, the first head to roll is Howie Roseman. The first head to roll absolutely must be Howie Roseman, who just continues to bring back guys like Deshaun Jackson, Vinnie Curry. Uh, you know, he, he's it, all of his moves have seemed to be stale anymore. It's like these guys won the Super Bowl, and then they just started farting into a wine glass and smelling it. Their head is so far up their own ass, and they like the smell. They lose this week. That's Philly. That's Negadelphia. You might be right. I'm not even, that's not even like Philly being Negadelphia. You might be right at this point. <clears throat> Your, your defense isn't getting to the quarterback enough. Where in the F is Fletcher Cox? I haven't seen him in two years. Where have you been? I'm about to start putting his face on milk cartons. Speaking of people who are robbing this team blind, Fletcher Cox has been absolutely absent as far as the pass rush goes for over two years. Sure, he still helps out in the run game, but I need Fletcher Cox to do more than just this. All Fletcher Cox has done for the last two years is he gets his guy and he pushes him straight back. And that's all he does. And he does it really well. But you need to move off of him and sack the damn quarterback. The man has completely forgot how to move side to side. He's washed up. I've said it for two years now. Prove me wrong. I want to eat those words so bad. I want someone to come at me next week. Oh, see, you're an idiot. I hope so. But the fact of the matter is I said it all last season and he never proved me right. And he's continuing to do it now. Exactly. Sick of hearing of the double team. That's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. Aaron Donald gets double teamed. J.J. Watt gets double teamed. All of the greats get double teamed. And you know what? They still produce. Brandon Graham gets double teamed, and he still produces. 
Fletcher Cox is it, it, he's going completely under the radar. Everyone wants to talk about Jalen Hurts. No one's realized that Fletcher Cox hasn't done anything in over two years. And it starts with him, because Jim Schwartz isn't going to all of a sudden load up the blitz train as much as we want him to do it. Because when he does do it, it works. It succeeds. But this team is just f from top to bottom. Trade him and get it. I, I, hey, Keith, I said it last year. I said, look, I know, I'm know i not trying to be a hot take guy, and the Eagles fan doesn't want it to happen. But if I'm a GM, I'm, I was looking to move Fletcher Cox at last year's trade deadline when things were bad. <clears throat> and the more the more other teams get to see it, the less his value is. If things keep going awry, that's that's gonna have to be what they're gonna have to do is trade Fletcher Cox for a pick. They're not again though. They're gonna cower. I mean, we can't. We can't just continue to wait until week 12 for this team to wake up under the Doug Peterson error. Because since the Super Bowl, again, this team has had absolutely flat starts to the point where they needed to go on winning streaks to make it into the uh, to the postseason. The last two seasons. Trade him for a pick, huge pace for this to fix this team. O line, DN, wide receiver, linebacker. I mean, <laughs> Keith, you had to say it. Another trigger. Trigger warning. You said linebacker. Nathan Gary. You sucked last year. What does Howie Roseman do? Let's bring him back. He can't cover. He can't tackle. Why does he play? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Trey Crock. Trey Graham. So, I see your point in saying Trey Graham. But Graham is still being productive. And Graham is going to be on... I think he's on the... I think he's on the books for next year. And with his, I don't think you get the return on investment. So you could trade Graham, but I think with his money and what he makes, you're going to get, realistically speaking, maybe a fifth. Maybe a fifth. I'm in the boat and looking to move Ertz. What up, Philly? And see, so you got that uh, Twitch Prime badge too, Philly. And I don't know if you're a uh, new or old user. I don't know if that maybe is a Joe Heston in chat. Uh, but feel free to use that uh, Twitch Prime subscription right here. Um, it's Nick. What up, Nick? I was gonna, you know, I I, I I was hoping it was a new newcomer, but uh, you know, uh, I, I I figured I figured a a name like Philly and it had to be someone that's already been here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I like it. I like it. No, no sorry. It's not, I like it. Um, I, I like the name. I like, you know, and I'll remember next week. It's, it's all I need is one time. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, really now Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame players should be kept talking about moving Ertz and then Keith disagree. Keith is a huge Ertz fan as is, let's face it, most of Philadelphia, um, I, I would move Ertz before I moved Graham, because again, so, I'm, I'm totally talking out of the side of my ass here, but I do think it's a pretty educated guess. I would think that Fletcher Cox on this market brings back probably a third round pick. And, and that's, you know, good enough. I think Graham probably gets you... A fifth, maybe a fifth plus, and I don't know that that's good enough. Zach Ertz, Zach Ertz brings you potentially a second. So again, return on investment. If you truly are selling, you do that. 
I'm not really selling as much as I'm acknowledging that I, with my own two eyes, see Fletcher Cox as washed up, and I want to just cut my losses. I said that last year. He still has yet to impress me through two games this year. I realize it's early, but I'm going to stick to my guns. And I, as an Eagles fan, hope more than anything to eat my words week after week after week. The Jersey game is strong with this one. Yeah, it was a uh, this was a really good gift from a really good viewer. Shout out to Jay Ziggy in chat. What up, Jamie? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I figured it was a good week to bust this one out since all the all the Philly teams sucked. I could I could rock a team liquid tonight. <laughs> um, I prefer not to move either, but if we go full re rebuild, uh, they gotta go all, or they all gotta go. Excuse me. Again, I'm not looking for full rebuild. I'm looking for return on investment. I don't think Fletcher Cox, just trading Fletcher Cox is, you know. And Zach Ertz, I'm not moving until next year if I'm trading him. I'm just not. You still have Zach Ertz next year. I'm keeping him. I think this team could still make a playoff run. I'm not saying all is lost. But I just, you know, what's Fletcher Cox for the rest of his... I want to see. I imagine there's still a pretty good amount of years on Fletcher Cox deal. One. You got two more years after this. Two more years with a cap hit of 22 million plus. Yeah. Bye bye. Matter of fact, now that I look at that, you're probably only getting a fourth round pick for Fletcher Cox, and I'll still do it. You could get rid of Fletcher Cox and still make the playoffs this year because, let's face it, he's been MIA. I'll give him the run game. I really will. I'm not trying to sound ultra negative, but let me, let me try to prove myself wrong. Because I can't remember the last time this dude has got a sack. He had three and a half sacks last year. Three and a half sacks. And I did a halftime show and Kevin K Christian, our good friend of the show, was saying Fletcher Cox is the least of this defense's problems. We really couldn't get into it because it was a, a halftime show. I quickly retorted, yes it is. <laughs> it really is. It's not the least of our problems. It's the most of our problems. He's making $22 million against the cap. Everyone wants to talk about how much money Carson makes. And right now, rightfully so. His contract is double team in the Eagles. You want to talk double teams? He's double teaming out. Oh, giggity. <laughs> uh, especially beginning of the season, uh, I noticed they stopped double teaming him. Yeah, he's really... He's not getting as, as much double team. Brandon Graham is garnering more double teams right now. And guess what? Dude's still producing. Brandon Graham, who was a total bust for the first, what, four or five years plus of his Eagles career, really came on late. Really came on since the Super Bowl season. Big part of why we won that Super Bowl. So was Fletcher Cox. <clears throat> Although in 2017, Fletcher Cox, that was the uh, Super Bowl year, right? Fletcher Cox had five and a half sacks. In 2018, he had ten and a half. And that's when he's been MIA since. So I guess we can't really say the last two years because 2018 he had a good season, at least going off of sacks, which is, in my opinion, the most important defensive lineman stat. Need to get away from the Ruben Amaro effect. Thank you, Nick. Nick, when we won the Super Bowl, and Keith will attest to this, 
the first thing I cautioned was do not fall in love with all of these players just because they won you a ring. And Nick and Philadelphia, what has Howie Roseman done? He has fallen in love with all of these players. I mean, even down to bringing Jason Peters back, which really wasn't a bad move, but even he bent you over backwards. Need a linebacker and never should have let Jenkins go. Big mistake. Look, Jalen Mills has played pretty decent. I think the secondary's done a good job. They haven't really got burnt too bad over the top yet. All in all, the defense has been bad, though. So, you might be right. I loved Malcolm Jenkins, and I, I do agree. They shouldn't have let him go. I think Rodney McLeod should have been the one to go. But now Howie's trying to act like, oh, we, we're going to get young. But he did it in the wrong spot, especially because... McLeod, McLeod is young, but he's got a lot of injuries, which kind of makes him old in football terms. Leader on defense. Couldn't agree more. Malcolm Jenkins should still be an eagle. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to retort that. Uh, Nick says, like I've said, um, like I said, our secondary needed improvement, but adding Slay and subtracting Jenkins does nothing. Yeah, it, it, if this is positive, it may be tilted it a little bit. But I'm not a McLeod fan. I think Jalen Mills could have played his spot just as easily as he's, or difficultly as he's playing Jenkins' spot. But, here we are. I don't want to just, I don't totally want to live in the past, although I do think we should flame Howie right now, because I think he deserves it. So I'm not going to I'm not going to deter chat from from flaming how and we can keep talking about his other uh his other mistakes. Uh Keith, I think I think I missed you. I think I'm uh Alshon was a terrible re-sign in retrospect and yeah, Keith, and that was a that was one I eat my words. I, I talked about how Alshon was... I, I talked about how he was such a great locker room guy, and it turns out he's the rat. Top Gun. What up? I believe that's George. Shout out for the follow. Thank you, thank you. Um, I like that. Uh, <clears throat> let Howie stay to manage the salary, but bring someone in to do the draft. Well, when we did that, it didn't really work either. I mean, what did Joe Douglas do here? <laughs> Not nothing. <laughs> Great show, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean Joe Douglas. It, it, people, people act like when Joe Douglas was here, like yeah, we won, but look at the drafts. The drafts still weren't as as good as they were. JJ Arthegas, <laughs> oh, oh, Whiteside over Metcalf. Ah, uh, yeah. Never gonna let that one down. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a tough one. This, you know, Howie Roseman in my, again, Howie Roseman's the first to go right now. It's not Wentz. It's not Peterson. It's Howie Roseman. Then it's probably Wentz. <laughs> I think Peterson will probably have the most staying power within this organization. I'm not saying I agree with that. Because now let's focus a little bit on Doug Peterson and, and the negative there. Everyone keeps going back to, um, oh crap, the name just escaped me. The offensive coordinator, uh, Frank Reich. Oh, and Frank Reich was here. When Frank, well, guess what? I, and I hear this a lot. Never should have let Frank Reich go. Never should have let Frank Reich go. But here's the thing. Frank Reich wanted to be a head coach. You weren't going to win a Super Bowl 
and then f fire Peterson to hire Frank Reich. But the damning thing is, is if that's true, if it's Frank Reich, Frank Reich, Frank... Well, then the problem isn't that Frank Reich left. It's that Doug Peterson is still here. And that he's ultimately the problem. I'm not saying he is. But for the Frank Reich crowd. It's just like the Joe Douglas crowd. When you're like, wait a second. When you really look at it, Joe Douglas didn't really do much while he was here. And he's still not... It's not like the Jets are all of a sudden... I mean, I know it's the Jets... But it's not like they're all of a sudden on top of the world. But, uh... But, you know, the, the whole Peterson thing. And then... Peterson kind of gets contentious with the front office. When last year there was clearly a problem with the offense. Now we still don't have an offensive coordinator. He could have easily gone out there and... and Got someone other than Marty Morningweg and, and the other hires. Could have signed an offensive coordinator. Maybe said offensive coordinator is helping Carson Wentz out right now. But hey, at least we got Jalen Hurts on the field for those three plays that he did nothing in. <clears throat> I don't think Peterson can call plays. Again, if, if Peterson can't call plays, then you got to fire him. I, I kind of want my head coach playing, you know, making the calls. Can we get a two-for-one on plane tickets out of town? Send Klintak and Howie simultaneously. Matt Klintak, and again, trigger warning, and I might go off the side rail for right now. Matt Klintak should be fired right now. You have three days to sign JT Real Muto. Before this season ends. Not nothing being heard. Nothing. If I'm JT Real Muto at this point, I'm going to the Mets. <laughs> I mean, what what is what is the point of staying? So yeah, Keith, I agree. If we could send them both out of town right now. That would be fantastic. When are the Eagles going to blitz? Uh, again, if if Fletcher Cox is only getting you three sacks, yeah, you need to be dialing up the blitz a little bit more. Unfortunately, you have no linebackers. Where does it come from? It's tough. Um, I hate to say it, but I have... I have doubts of Wentz as our franchise quarterback as hard as uh but it's hard uh for me to love a player. I mean, if you have doubts about Wentz, now is probably the time to air them. Because, you know, you might be right. In my opinion, what I see with Wentz is correctable. Like last week. So week one, you decided your offense, all you were going to do was go over the top, right? That failed. Week two, you decided all we're going to do is dink, 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 dunk. That failed. Maybe this week we do a little bit of the over the top. We do a little bit of the dink, 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 dunk. And oh my God forbid we run the ball too. But Carson Wentz is not escape from blame. Carson Wentz absolutely has to make better decisions. He cannot throw that ball to J.J. Ortega-Whiteside in the end zone, and he's double covered. And some of those sacks in week one were 100% his fault. Carson's got to make better throws, and like I said at the start of the show... I see it as pretty correctable because I think it's mostly with his footwork. I also think it would behoove Coach Peterson to stop making him run naked boots out to the left against his weak side. If a quarterback is throwing against his body, you know how hard that is to do? I get that it's a strength for Wentz because he's damn good at doing that. 
but you're opening this guy up to a brutal hit. You're making it harder for him to throw. Start doing it to the right. If I'm JT, I'm testing the market. He owes the Phillies nothing. Completely agree. Fire defensive coordinator Schwartz. Yup. Better run the ball. Yup. Just mentioned it. Um, they need to let Wentz uh, play to his strength. Let him roll out. I agree. But roll out to his right. Not to his left. Not against his throw. Like, you know how much harder it is to throw against your body than to throw with your body? I, I'm not a, I'm not one to say Carson can't run. Carson, I don't want to can't anything on Carson. But I do want to you I want to put my my players in the best position to play. I'm not even saying Carson should never run out to his left. But Peterson only strips that boot to his weak side. It makes no sense to me as a football fan. I know I've never played the position, Doug. But I have watched the game my entire life. Played a lot of Madden. I know that if I run against my quarterback's weak side, his accuracy goes down. I don't know how you fix the fumble issues. I think I think you and Chris Keith disagree that I had mentioned that one a few years ago. Um, the fumbles, well, here's the thing. If you mentioned it a few years ago, I probably said give it time. They're still happening. It's a problem. Madden knowledge. Hey, never doubt that Madden knowledge, chat. Never doubt that Madden knowledge. No, but the the fumbles are a problem. Again, I, I, we've seen it. Now it's a trend, right? If you said it a few years ago, maybe I was like, okay, look, I, I saw that in college. And we'll see if it ever gets coached. Well, it's not getting coached. And it... It's on both. Like, coaching should be helping him. But the fumbles are his fault because, again, he's holding on to the ball too long. In most cases. So, yeah. Uh, at this point, Nick, I, I don't really disagree with you that the fumbles are a problem. The, at, at this point, the turnovers are a problem. Because the interceptions can... It's going to sound weird, but you can throw an interception at a right time. But more importantly, you can, or, or more situate, you can really throw it in the wrong time. That throw to Ortega Whiteside in the end zone, when you do it backed up against your own, you know, last week when they, or two weeks ago when they did it against the Redskins, right in scoring position for the Redskins. So, so yeah, as far as, as far as, um, as far as this team goes, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a tough one. All in all, they got to get better. And how do you do that? You, uh, the Washington football team. Did I, did I say the Redskins? I probably did. You're right. I'm sorry. That is what we call in the business a Feridian slip. A Feridian slip. And I did really, I did really good that, that week leading into, uh, because I prepared my mind for it. And it, as quick as, as it goes in, it goes out. Shout out to all my teachers who tried to embed knowledge into my brain. Um, but yeah, the, the, the Washington football team. Huh. I'm glad you cleared because when you said the who, I was I was really confused as to what you meant. And I'm glad that you said the Washington net. Now I know. Uh, Got to do a better job. Um, but you're right, yeah. The Washington Pigskins is what I think they should be called. <clears throat> 2012 vibes this year. Oof. Yeah, let's hope not. Look, and I don't want to talk too much about uh, the game on Sunday because Keith and I are going to do a show uh, right here on Twitch um, from 12 to, you know, about 12.45, 12.50-ish, leading you guys into the football game. So, so we don't want to talk too much. But how you turn this around quickly is you go out on Sunday and you whoop. 
the Cincinnati Bengals. Got to lay a beat down on them. All three facets of the game. Offense, defense, special teams. You need to win in all three facets. And you need to start feeling good about this team as a whole. Quarterback's got to throw multiple touchdowns. No interceptions. Like We need to see an A effort to believe that maybe things can turn around. But yeah, it's a tough schedule. We'll see. That's why you got that's why you needed to beat the Washington football team and you needed to beat and, and you need to beat the the Bengals. Nah, I can't have any of that AJ Green energy, nah. Doug needs to stop with the, well, it was a weird offseason. Every team, yep, I completely agree. That's not an excuse. Saying that is an indictment on yourself. You knew during the draft it was going to be a weird football season when you were doing your draft over Zoom. And you still picked Jalen Hurts in the second round. You knew there was going to be no preseason. As much as the NFL was in denial about it outwardly, you knew it. So, yeah, Nick, mm -mm, not an excuse. It is not an excuse to say, well, it was a weird offseason and, and we didn't have this and we didn't have that. And No, Doug, no. It doesn't work. You aren't the only team that had a weird offseason. So, <laughs> other than that, how do we feel about the birds? <laughs> um, it's a tough one this year. It's going to, look, again, the only way to start... To ride the ship is is to you, you got to blow out the Bengals. You can't just win. It's got to be at least a ten point victory, and even that, I'm probably I might not be like, hey, rah rah, you win by thirty. You put up like a thirty four to ten beat down on them. Maybe I feel good. But if you win 23 to 20, no, nah, that's not good enough. If they lose to the stinking Bengals, I am done with this season. You and most of Philadelphia, rightfully so. You start this season 0-3, you might be seeing Jalen Hurts at some point. And that's my fear, because I, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it like I say it when it comes to Carson Wentz. But I don't want to see Jalen Hurts this year. I just don't. I don't want to see him on the offense at all. If he scores a touchdown, I'll be the first to cheer for them. I'm never gonna root against a player wearing my team my my jersey. But I don't want to see him on the field, quite frankly. I don't need to hear about Taysom Hill. You know what Taysom Hill was? An undrafted free agent. Not a second round pick. In a team that had needs. So. That's my my feelings on, on Jalen Jalen Hurts. I'll always root for him if he's wearing midnight green, but I, quite frankly, don't want to see him. <clears throat> um, but yeah, moving. I want to start moving on. Let's talk. Let's talk a little Phillies. We can talk a little Sixers if we want to talk about you know Mike D'Antoni and you know are we getting JJ Harding and getting rid of Embiid and uh, no, I just. Um, 
Left Hill and Vegas Field. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So the Phillies, we kind of already struck a nerve, right? I even saw chat bringing it up. Let's talk about it. JT Real Muto. Will he be a Philly? Actually, real quick to chat. I want to gauge where you're at. Are the Eagles are the Eagles a playoff team? Yes or no? And then also maybe yes or no is JT going to be here next year? <laughs> I got no on the Eagles playoff team. Um But yeah, is is JT I don't, I don't know at this point what's like like chat was saying what's the point for him to stay I mean if anything what's the point for him to not make the Phillies overpay for him you could have signed him at the beginning of this season for probably probably four years and 25 a pop it would have put him over the Joe Maurer deal at 22, if I'm not mistaken, from I remember earlier in the season. Now, you're probably going to get him for about six years, 30. And a catcher. And once you do that, don't start giving me the luxury tax crap, because it's time to start overspending. <laughs> because you have no... I mean, the fact that we're having multiple bullpen games down the stretch is an absolute indictment on your farm system. The fact that there is not one young arm to come up and give you innings. How do you not have three or four capable starting pitchers to come in during this season and just give you innings? Instead, you have to go multiple bullpen games and Vince Velasquez starts and... Bleh. You finally get a good one out of Eflin last night. Props to him, who's kind of been your best pitcher as of late. Vince Velasquez in a must-win game is starting tomorrow. And you got Nola Wheeler after that, which is great. But yeah, and, and to your point, uh, Joe Hunter, they gave up the best possible pitcher in baseball. I don't know that, you know, we'll see if Sixto's the... He's going to be a one, a certified, you know, one, no matter. For a two-year rental... In which you didn't make the playoffs, most likely. You certainly didn't make a playoff run. Because we can all see that the Phillies aren't going to do that this year. Even if they make the playoffs, they're not a playoff team. So they're going to overpay for him. And after that, all bets are off. You need to go over the luxury tax. We can't wait anymore. You're going to need another pitcher. You're going to need some bullpen help. If we could publicly if we could publicly execute a workman, I'd be all for it. Absolute terrible closer. I would rather see Nearest out there. I I cannot take another game of of workman as my closer. It's, it's beyond me that, that that Gabe, oops, I mean Joe Girardi, even though he hasn't made any moves different than Gabe yet, you would think that he would stop using him just time after time after time in the lates. I, I just don't get it. Jojo Romero... Yeah, I don't know that I would bring him in as a closer. But the dude's at least... He's got a screw loose. And sometimes that plays plays good for a closer. But he's kind of all over the, all over the place. 
I would go Nearest. I would go Parker. I'd maybe even go Henry. Alvarez, if he's, you know, I, I know the dude got his sack kind of exploded earlier in the year. Haven't really seen much of him since. But, uh, it's, it's been tough. <clears throat> Should be tough. Yeah, you know, closer needs to be nuts. That's, that's a little true, but you need, closer can't be all over the place. And that's sort of what JoJo is, at least at, at times. And just as annoying as it is to see a hanging curveball get rocked for home runs, it's just as annoying to see a pitcher in the ninth inning give up walks, which is sort of Nearest's forte as well. Nearest likes to do a little bit of both, but he can still at times get outs, which I'm not so sure about with with Workman. But I think we can all agree that, again, with a bad deck, Joe Girardi has still done a pretty subpar job. By no means do we want to fire him, but I think he could grade Girardi out at like a C this year. Babied pitchers way too often. Just didn't like his overall use of the bullpen, albeit, again, a bad one. Fire Clentac, for sure. Not, you know, Girardi, we don't need to fire him. But for that very small percentage of Phillies fans that said Gabe Kapler isn't the problem, he may have been right. I think... We all know now for sure the problem is Matt Klintak and or Andy McPhail. Yeah, 60 games. He took the start. I mean, even last night. Eflin's not going to pitch potentially for the rest of the season. What are you saving his arm for? Let him finish it. The bullpen is overworked and is going... They're going to get used again like over the next three days. I don't think they're going to get more use. They've been overworked. You were up 12 to 3 at the time, and you still pulled Eflin to zero. Like, it felt like too early. You should have let him at least gotten one more out. Gotta be thinking these things at this time of the year. Hey, Joe Girardi has, has undermanaged this team, in my opinion. I didn't see the seven games or even, you know, cut that in half, the three, four games that Girardi won for me this year. It felt like the other way around, if anything. Felt like maybe he lost us three or four. I don't see anybody in chat telling me I'm wrong, so I like that. <laughs> but yeah. Just something to think about as far as this offseason and maybe how we treated Gabe. And maybe the, you know, a lot of the, I heard this a lot last year. Matt Kluntak's putting in the lineups. And, and, and I mean, even this year, Reese Hoskins steady in the two hole. Does that feel right? Does Reese Hoskins feel like a two hole hitter? Am I really a dinosaur when it comes to baseball already? <laughs> like, am I that out of touch? Or I get using the best hitter as a two-hole hitter. Was that Reese Hoskins at any point this year? Reese Hoskins needs to be a four or five hitter, especially with how he was pro producing this year. Yet, steady. If he's in, he was batting two. Never made sense. Matter of fact, especially with the rules this year, I would have rather had Bryce. Because even if you go late game, 
if if late game they want to bring in a lefty, well, you had the three batter rule. Those next two batters would have been Reese and JT. JT and Reese, whatever way. But I know people wanted to, oh, the righty-lefty, righty. Oh, righty-lefty, righty. Reese, you know, Reese, JT, Reese, Bryce, JT. It's good to break them up. Not this year. Not this year. This year it would have behooved them to keep them more together. Not really. You, you never really saw. I don't, I'm not sure if we saw Bryce... JT Reese or you know Bryce Reese JT at all this year. I I don't know how anybody could still like Roman Quinn. He he can't throw, he can't track a ball. He's fast. That's that's all he does. He's fast. He suck. He can't bunt. He's got no baseball IQ. I I I can't stand Roman Quinn. I can't stand Roman Quinn. Adam Hazley isn't a center fielder. Really can't. As a matter of fact, I I can't stand Adam Hazley. Adam Hay, I what does Adam Hazley do for a baseball team? He hits for average, but he's got no speed. He's got no pop. He's got no arm. What does Adam Hazley do for a, a a baseball team? Shout out to the Phillies farm system yet again. No center field. I mean, look, just just as bad as the bullpen situation is, Matt Klintak should be indicted for never for not addressing the center field position. Why is Jay Bruce playing the field? For all these and so many other answers, tune in next week. <laughs> I, 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 there has been this this baseball season from top to bottom has been so confusing as far as the management and front office. Jay Bruce has been riddled with injuries the past two years, but his bat has been so invaluable to that lineup. Why the bleep are you putting him out in the field when all you need is his bat in the lineup and you had a designated hitter this year? Ah. Uh. I don't get it. I just simply don't. So Joe Girardi, in my opinion, needs to do a much better job next year. And in these final three games, he needs to coach his life off. Maybe these are the three games that we see him win. The Rays are already clinched up, but they are a damn good baseball team. You're still going to be seeing something out of them. You need a sweep. I mean, you need a sweep and then some. But the Phillies are right there, nonetheless. Marlins at 28 and 28, the Phillies at 28 and 29. Could still snag that second place spot. I don't think there's any shot for the National League wild card. Yeah. I guess there's still an outside shot that the Phillies could get the uh <laughs> How about that? What if the Phillies Lose, they don't make the playoffs, and the second wild card goes to San Francisco. Gabe Kapler's San Francisco Giants instead of the Philadelphia Phillies. That put a little sting in your brain, your rear end. That would piss me off a little bit. And quite frankly, quite frankly, I don't know that the Phillies make the playoffs this year. They don't, when I look at the Phillies, I don't see a playoff team. The only reason why I have some hope is that I I don't know that the Marlins are a playoff team either. Although, if Keith is still around, he can attest 
And I said I wouldn't be surprised in a 60-game season for the Miami Marlins to make the playoffs. It's a Marlins thing to do. When, when everyone's talking about how good the Phillies are going to be or how good the, the Mets could be, they're the sleepers, or the Nationals, the defending champions, the Braves. No one had anything to say about the Marlins. It's a typical Marlins thing to do. They make the playoffs, even though they disrupt the entire, you know, Philly season. Which I don't use as an excuse. I just don't. And if you do, that's okay. I won't argue it. But in my opinion, the getting started... I mean, they, they got off... It's not like they came out to a three-game sweep of the Marlins. They were one and two. They were out to a slow start, and then they came back out to another slow start. <clears throat> but yes, uh, I agree. Um, I agree, Joe Hunter. If they're in, they're right out. In and out like a McDonald's drive through ba da ba ba done. Uh, just like them to get in. Uh, yeah, me too. I want to. I want to see some bubble. Some bubble playoffs. I want to see my team go into the bubble because if they get in there, you never know. You just never know. So. And just in general, I mean, to make the playoffs might mean something to JT Real Muto. It should mean something to potential free agent targets if they make the playoffs this year. So that's where we're at. Coming up on an hour, coming up to the final thoughts segment of the show. If you have anything else, my kind of final thoughts are uh, the Mike D'Antoni thing has been going around a lot. And I gotta be honest, I think I'd rather Tyron Liu than Mike D'Antoni. I know nobody wants to see Tyron Liu here, but he won a championship. Mike D'Antoni has been has been chasing championships after championships after championships and has never got there. And I don't know that he comes in and commands any respect from, you know, guys like Embiid and Simmons. I, it would certainly be a much different team than we've ever really seen D'Antoni play with, too. And I'm certainly not bringing in D'Antoni and then letting him take control and being like, well, now we're going to trade Joel Embiid. So I'm pretty out on, on D'Antoni. Um, saw Billy Donovan sign with the Bulls. I really would have liked him. Uh, so... Right now, it looks like it's either between Ty Lu or Mike D'Antoni. And uh, that's a little... I think that's... Neither na name really rings true to any any 76ers fans. We had so much hope for 76ers. I, I mean, we had, we had all this hope for just sports in general, right? And it was like... It was like these teams were speed running to lose our interest. Now the Phillies stuck around all year. That's fine. But we had much higher hopes and immediately out of the gate we kind of saw that those hopes weren't going to be met. And and this Philly season has really been just an arduous task to get through. Thank God it was only 60 games. Could you imagine having to deal with this bullpen through 162? But man, the lineup has really made it enjoyable to watch. But yeah, we had such high hopes for the Sixers. And, and before game one of the Sixers, I had lost interest. Because Raul Neto was getting playing time in the bubble. Even in scrimmage games. I, I already saw that this team was screwed. 
And then what? Game four, Ben Simmons gets hurt. Game three. And even before that, in the time that he was there. Brett Brown had this weird obsession with trying to force Ben Simmons to shoot threes. Ben Simmons doesn't need to shoot threes. Ben Simmons just needs to have a jump shot. Ben Simmons just needs to make free throws. You put Ben Simmons at a... Ben Simmons is either a 1 or a 5 in today's NBA. He's not a 4. He's not a 2. He's not a 3. Everyone wants to play... Oh, he played 4 in college. Yeah, that worked out really well. He can't play four in the NBA. He doesn't have he doesn't need the outside game. Much less does he use it. He needs to find three spots on the court to take a jump shot from. And if one of them are from three, by all means it would help. He does seem to like that one corner. But these teams so quickly. I mean, the Flyers, again, they didn't... They gave us a run. They they came out looking good. But they should have they beat the Islanders. They should have at least had one more round. And the Eagles, 0-2 out the gate. Like, we already... It's, it's, it's tough to, to, to keep interest. Because we already kind of thought it could be a down year. So yeah, it's been tough, but hey, there's still time. The Phillies could sneak into the playoffs. I don't, I don't know what it would do for us, but we'll see. And if the Eagles win in a blowout this Sunday, maybe we start to turn things around. You had, uh, I know, I never really got to the injury report. Um, but you, you had Rager who you're probably, he's two weeks, two different injuries during the preseason. He got hurt and Hey, credit to him. He came out and he played, but he's already got two different injuries. Tears his UCL in his thumb. Might not see him until after, until after the bye. But hey, Alshon Jeffrey was back. You know, the rat's back. We'll see. We'll see what he how you know. We'll see what he does. Um. You know that's that's really that's the big thing. You 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 might get Alshon back, but you lost Rager, which is really tough. Um. So. Moving into this game next week, we'll talk about it Sunday. Um, Keith and I will be here, right here again, live Sunday, um, leading you into the game. So we'll, we'll break it down more then. Um, but who knows? All I know is if this team wins in an in blowout fashion, we'll start to feel good again, and that's all we can root for. Um, so with that, guys, thank you all for tuning in, um, both live and on demand. Uh, make sure if you ever miss any shows, you can catch us on demand. Just search War Room Philly on YouTube and uh, we should pop up and just working towards that subscriber goal to get that fat YouTube link. Um, so, um, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, we're going, we, we, we do, we need a running back to show up. We need it. We need a running back. Um. Wentz can't have three bad weeks. I totally agree. Great final thoughts. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys all for tuning in, both live and on demand. With that, I am Anthony Pinto. Keith and I will be back right here on Sunday. And until then, we are...